give up on life literally i give up on everything like so much has like been happening that's just like stressing me out man welcome back to my channel my name's e aka the plug and i make videos about my life in ghana so <laughs> first of all yeah let me just say this yesterday i recorded the video and for some reason like it was it was in parts so i downloaded the most of the parts but the rest of the parts were that like there's two parts that just wouldn't download for my gopro and i couldn't understand why i was so stressed out the whole yesterday i just been peed off this morning i was peed off but even like the whole week has just been crazy anyway so let me start at the start sunday i was meant to do a soup kitchen it flopped <laughs> first thing that flopped was um the food that i cooked yeah i made some jollof like I was trying making so much yeah at once and I just flopped it literally like when I mean I flopped it I mean I flopped it so badly and it's not even that I can't cook I can actually cook but somehow I ended up flopping it so I had to get the ingredients again the next day but anyway um so Sunday I started cooking first thing that I found out was um the chicken so Obviously you have to clean the chicken and all of that. So I was cleaning the chicken and while I was cleaning the chicken, after I cleaned the chicken, sorry, I chopped it up. Um, I asked my uncle to come and help me because like, I was a bit overwhelmed because I was trying to do everything myself this time. I was going to go, well, I did, but not the day, but on Wednesday or Tuesday, I went in a car and I handed out the food. And obviously I knew that I couldn't do that by myself. I couldn't record and do that by myself. And luckily she even came along because like, recording was so long because you give out food to someone that someone else come and then everyone just literally you know how it is in Ghana everyone was just around the car and these times they were in traffic it's not as if like we pulled up some we're literally in traffic because we know there's some spots that we always go through and there's always like kids um begging and stuff so we thought like let's just go through that area in and out and we just basically done a round trip and it was so long that like, we didn't get to record a lot but um you know we still got to man yeah we still managed to hand out food so anyway so hear this now um because we was going to do it in a car we didn't want to take too much as well so we took we basically cooked half of the food and then like the next day i think it was the next day yeah the next day we cooked the rest but anyway so i messed up the jollof so i found out the next day we went to cook the jollof anyway so the chicken cook the chicken now the chicken's ready we left the chicken there um we left the kitchen in the kitchen so my i hope i said chicken in the kitchen right so yeah um so we left the chicken in the kitchen so she's gone i'm at home next day she comes and she goes into the kitchen and obviously okay let me explain where the kitchen is the kitchen in my apartment is not in my actual apartment it's a communal kitchen which only like for some reason i don't know this place is weird like they have lots of kitchens like that communal kitchen is my kitchen so anyway so she's gone into the kitchen and on the way into the kitchen she's looking at her phone as she looks up she sees the um the caretaker and uh, one of the workers basically around the chicken the one of the workers went a different direction the caretaker started attaching the um light bulb because we had um we had the ring light in there so we could like record like little bits but it was so hot in there so, like most of the video was rubbish anyway <laughs> but anyway so um the ring light was in there the guy just started touching the ring light but he was like he had food like around his mouth like he had like bits i don't know if it was bits of chicken or season or whatever around his mouth so anyway she she thought that was a bit weird so she texted me i'm in my room i didn't even know that she's here yet so she texted me saying like something like basically weird like she caught them doing something weird or something I'm gonna put the text there because I can't remember exactly what she said. So yeah. So she texted me saying that and I'm thinking, what the hell? But as she texted me said that, I get a knock on the window. That is the caretaker, yeah? The caretaker has come to the window to come and tell me to make sure that I hide my food because over here, people like to eat people's food. So I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, right, is that not a problem? And then these times here, yeah, the guy knocked the first time, knocked the second time, and I didn't answer because I was in the toilet. So obviously, I came out of the toilet, I'm like, yo, like, what's up, what's up? Then he's like, ah, oh, he's doing this to tell me to come outside to talk to him. I'm thinking, nah, man, I can't be doing that. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? And then he's like, ah, oh, basically to hide the chicken and rare, rare, rare. But as he's telling me that he's chewing, so meaning that I don't know if he had, like, put chicken in his pocket or what, but 
Anyway, he was chewing. So anyway, he's telling me, yeah, basically the boys will eat your food, very, very, very. I'm like, all right, like, doesn't make no sense, but cool. But I already got the message from Manka saying that they were doing something booky, so cool. So now I knew I get dressed, I go into the kitchen, and obviously I was telling Manka what happened. Then she's like, no, no, no I'm gonna go talk to them. So she's gone and spoke to the guy that works here, and then she's like, not the caretaker, the other guy. And she's like, obviously she don't appreciate what's happened. Like she caught him red-handed. Then what he does, he comes to me and tells me to basically hide my food because people eat it. These times here, we clearly know that he ate some. Do you get what I mean? And the way they was acting was dodgy. That like, we clearly know that both of them did something. Either one of them ate it, or both of them ate it. So basically, it's like it's not even like he didn't even apologize for it or nothing. Like that's you get me. That's rude, basically. And then the guy was like, oh, oh, oh yeah, I understand. He basically tried to give some excuse, saying that um, he he was just looking to make sure that the food was alright, basically. So the way that man left it before she went was a certain way. She left the lid off just a little bit so he could give it some air while it cools down or whatever. Yeah. So when she'd gone there in the morning, like the thing was like literally half open. So the guy was there already acting dodgy. So like anyway, it's inevitable that the guy ate some or the guy opened it or he touched it. So obviously she's like she's she's peed off. So obviously she's like it doesn't make sense as to why he's gone out of his way to come and tell me to hide my food. Like but he's been caught, just apologize for it. The guy was like, Oh sorry, 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 sorry. Like, oh, well, I'll go speak to him, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, like it was that was the first thing I annoyed, yeah? So cool. So this is like happening during the day. Remember, so obviously while she's there I found out that I messed up the rice. Cool, so now I have to go buy another bag of rice. No problem. So I come back cooking the rice now and um, I receive a message from my landlord. Um, not my landlord, sorry, the manager, whoever I dealt with when I moved in. So after I moved in, a few days after, he comes to me and he asks me for a deposit because he gave me a discount on the property. So, you know, we're like the bargain, yeah. So he gave me a discount on the property and because he gave me a discount on the property, they're asking for a deposit to make sure that I stay here for that amount of time that I said. I told them I wanted to stay three to four months. No, sorry, I told them I wanted to stay six months at the start. They said that they don't accept long terms like that six months. So I was like, you know what? That's perfect, three, four months, that's cool. After that, the guy changed it to five to six months. But anyway, regardless, I was like, whatever, it's fine, because I was gonna, you know, five to six months is fine, I don't mind that. But where they um, reduce the price for me now, they're saying that they want a deposit, which still doesn't make sense. I was like, what the hell, why would you want a deposit? So cool now. So now um, I explained to him that, listen, I've moved in, and it's now that you're telling me this, this has been four days now, all my stuff's in, I'm just about to settle in, and now you're telling me that you need a deposit, a whole month's rent. I'm like, listen, hear what, yeah, what I can do for you and I'm going to try it. <laughs> so I explained to him that I will try to put something on top every month. Whether if it's $200, $100, I'll try to put something on top. The guy was like, oh, okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm like, cool, no problem. But obviously it's so pissed it. But then in my head I thought, you know what? It's just, I'm just gonna be saving money because like, I'm gonna get that money back regardless. And I know that I've been through situations where they try to take the, um, they try to take the piss with the deposit and all of this, but in my head I'm thinking like, yo, I'm coming to you for the money. I'm giving it to you, I'm coming to you for the money. So anyway, um, not a problem. So I've, I've explained to him. So cool, so now he's telling me that um, they need, obviously he's talking about the security deposit. He might have thinking, oh, he's asking for like the $200 or $100, whatever I can put on top. This guy messages me now saying in full, so he can go and report. I'm like, huh? What are you talking about? I rang him and said, bro, what are you talking about in full? Like, how can I pay you in full? Like, how, how does that make sense? And on top of it, the conversation that we had, I told you that if I can, and it's not even like 100% sure that like, I even be able to give you 100. I said, if I can, wherever I can, if I can, I will give it to you, I'll put on top. And the guy's like, nah, like basically, like he needs it and he needs it in full. I'm like, the bro, that doesn't make sense. What kind of business is this? How can you just ring someone in the day and just say, yo, like, do you want like more than a thousand dollars? Basically, a thousand dollars in full. I'm like, huh? Like, I said, bro, 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 bro. I said, bro, like, slow down. I don't understand this. Like, I was on the phone for so long. Like, I'm like, listen, so who's at fault here? Because I don't understand. Obviously, I know I'm not at fault. I explained to him. And I'm like, I just basically want you to admit that you're at fault. So I've recorded it. I recorded our conversation, most of our conversation, and, and I'm gonna insert it now. I'm not understanding. 
Nah. <laughs> No, you're not understanding what I'm saying. I'm saying yes, what we agreed before I moved in, like we agreed on something before I moved in. Then after I've moved in, you have changed the agreement, yeah? And then now because you have changed the agreement, it is causing problems. So as for this one, who is at fault? That's what I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. and, we informed you about it. and then i've told you like the same thing that you informed me i told you if i can put something on top of um my monthly payments i will do that but as for me to give like the whole month payment i can't do that i've said that to you like if i can give it to you if i had it if i had it to give it to you i would have gave it to you but then at the same time it's an inconvenience because that's not what you said before i moved in So now, like, see with that one, I didn't have a problem. But now the problem is, is that you are going to charge me for your mistake. So you're going to charge me on a daily rate for your mistake. That's not fair. Oh, thank you. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so I have to tell him again. Now, he's saying that I told him about the... Uh, and he's saying the security and all he's saying that okay soon time yes we are fault for now just informing you informing you afterwards mm -hmm. so right now if it's, it's yes it's the uh, if, if getting the, the security is an issue okay it's fine if you're okay with paying half of that thousand dollars if you're okay with it it's even the two weeks okay then no problem all right so that'll be five hundred dollars i'll send you the rating kind of security Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. So, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, honestly, I don't know where I go wrong. Like, my head, like, is hurting the whole week. Um, Even with the soup kitchen thing, I swear to you, I was actually going to give up. Like, I was like, listen, like, literally, I was going to give up, man. It's so long. Like, how can I... I messed up the whole rice. Not even the rice that, that, yeah, okay, the rice like was the first bit. Then after that, this guy comes with this. That day I was like, listen, today, I thought, Michael, listen, today we're not doing anything. Like, listen, I'm sorry, we're not doing anything. Cool. Um, So, Monday, I think it was Monday. Monday or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday, we went out and um, we handed out the food. So, cool. So, now we've come back, yeah. We cooked the rest of the food now. The rest of the chicken, we cooked the rest of the chicken, sorry, so we cooked the chicken first and we weren't sure what we were going to do, if we are going to do jollof again or do white rice and stew. So we came back, we cooked um, the chicken and I left the chicken there on the side. So obviously you see the kitchen, yeah, it gets really hot, like really, really hot for some reason. Like when they turn off the fan, like it would get so hot. Even with the fan on, like it's pretty hot. So anyway, I left the chicken out to obviously cool down a little bit, left the fan on, cool. So now I'll come back, I'll put the chicken in the fridge, yeah? They love to turn off the fridge when there's nothing inside. I totally understand that. I have a fridge in my apartment, but it's really small, so it doesn't, like, the, ch the whole chicken um, wouldn't fit inside it. So cool, so what I did now, I put um, the chicken in the fridge, and I said to my uncle, like, the next day, obviously, we're gonna cook the rice on the same day, so, like, we'll just be hot, so we don't have to warm it. So we cook it on the same day that we do it early, so it should come to mind early. So, cool, we put the... I put the chicken in the fridge. <sighs> so stressed, so stressed. We missed out that day now. And um, it comes to the next day. Obviously, I, like with the apartment and everything, I need to find, like literally. Oh yeah, sorry. So, obviously you would have listened to the, um, what do you call it? <laughs> you would have listened to the voice note, um, the recording that I just put in. So within the recording, um, we had I had an argument with the man because I'm like, okay, what I'll do, I don't want to stay here anymore because when I come home, like if I go out and I come home, the security guard's always sleeping. I always have to bang on the gate so, so, so hard. He's a security guard, he shouldn't be sleeping. He should be up 24-7. So as soon as I, he should be up. No, I'll be banging on the door, banging on the door. Then even like, say if I want to leave at 10 o'clock, sometimes you'd be sleeping. I'm like, what the hell? It's like I'm leaving my uncle and I have to ask him permission to open the gate because um, with the gate, they lock it. So there's a, there's a big gate where cars pass through and obviously got a remote for that, but the other, um, the smaller gate, like there's a padlock on it. 
and he always locks it for like from 7 p.m the gates locked i'm like what the hell man i always have to like go look for someone to come open it man sometimes it gets really annoying and stressful so i'm like listen i didn't want to stay here no anymore anyway because we came to the con he he basically tried telling me that if i don't pay um the full deposit that basically i have to terminate my contract i'm like whatever because i want to leave anyway because this is a joke like taking a piss like people are eating man's food obviously i didn't tell him that yet but i'm like people are eating man's food and this and that like this is a joke so cool um so now i'm like you know what cool here what i'll do i'll pay half of my rent um for the two weeks and then i'll be gone by the two weeks the guy now's talking about i'm gonna send you an invoice i'm like cool an invoice no problem actually no what do you mean an invoice you haven't sent me the invoice the first time i moved in the first month i paid you you didn't send me an invoice now you want to send me an invoice i, I thought to myself something's dodgy it's like no 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 i don't want an no invoice it's cool i know how much um, my rent is i just pay half of it he's like no nah, no nah, basically we're gonna have to charge you daily i said how can you charge me daily for a mistake that you made like how does that make sense if you would have told me that from the get-go i would have went somewhere else like, why would I come to pay deposit when I could have gone to a better place, paid a little bit more and got the place? Like, come on, man. Like, it don't, it don't make sense. I'm, I'm, I came here to basically save money. So it's like, oh, like, it's not me. It's management. We just, we do only give discount monthly on a monthly basis and two weeks doesn't reach the month. I said, bro, I'm cancelling the contract because of you. Not because of me, because you're unprofessional. You're unprofessional and that's why I'm cancelling the contract because you're coming to me and asking for a deposit now like and you're asking in full so everything the, the whole conversation we had was just bull do you get what i'm saying the whole conversation we had was just bs so it, do, it, do, it doesn't make sense to me and on top of it you made me, you had me move in before you told me about the deposit so how, how does that make sense like that's not my fault that's your fault so i explained that to him he's like oh but then he's like oh yeah okay i'll say he's like i'll say that we're at fault i'm like no i don't want you to say that you're at fault i want you to understand that you're at fault so anyway so he's like oh he can't do that then he's like i'm gonna ring you back he rang me back try told me some next story i'm like bro i'm not trying to hear it like do you know what i'll do yeah you see the discounted price forget that just give me the raw price and like from the real price you know, from the real price. First, the real price, the actual price that they tried to give me was like one thousand two hundred. Yeah. Then the actual real price at one thousand. So if all the if all the said yeah, I would have paid one thousand two hundred. Do you get what I mean? But anyway, so the real price was actually a thousand. So cool. So I'm like, cool. I'll pay half of a thousand, which is what five hundred dollars. My man's like. Ah, uh, uh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Da, 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 da. I'm like, bro, that's the only thing I'm paying. I'm not paying no daily thing, literally. So you go back to your management and you basically let them know type of thing. That's what I was telling him. So yeah, cool. So Dow is rang back and then he said, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's fine. But if I stay longer than that, there's going to charge me on a daily rate. And that's like, cool, no problem. Because imagine that. That doesn't make no sense. If I would have stayed for the... If I would have stayed for the two weeks and I would have let him charge me on a daily basis, my rent would have been way more than a month. So like, how does that make sense? Why would I want to do that to myself? Like, and it's not even my fault. So back to the kitchen. I meant to say chicken. <laughs> back to the chicken now. I put the chicken in the fridge. Obviously trying to find a place. Like, everything just stressed, stressed me out so much. So now um, the next time, like, I told man, can I, like, not today. Um, we do it the next day, yeah, cool. So the next day now I've gone into the, um, I'm gonna say chicken, I've, I've gone into the kitchen and I open the fridge and the fridge is hot. Why the fuck is, why is the fridge hot? They turned off the fridge and I had food in it. Chicken gone. The chicken has gone off, literally. I had to throw the whole thing away and I wasted my time seasoning it, cooking it, cutting it. Do you know how long it is to cut without having the butcher knife? Do you know how long that is cutting through the bone? Oh my goodness, man. The chicken has gone off. Oh, bro, I, I, I was just defeated, man. At that point, like, I was just like, listen, I'll give up on life, literally. At that point, I was like, I'll give up, man. I'll give up on life, literally. I'll give up on everything. Like, so much has, like, been happening that's just, like, stressing me out, man. Like, it's long. Like, I, honestly, it's long. Like, it's long. Like, I, honestly, it's long. Like, I had to come and talk about it because I haven't vented about, you know, bad things happen because I haven't had any bad thing happen apart from this. But it just all happened at once. And it's like, I've got to find someone to move. I've got less than a week now to move, to find someone to go to. Like, I've so much going on that, like, my head is killing me. Like, literally killing me. 
like I don't know what to do. Um, literally, that. Like, <laughs> when I mean yo, you know, I thank God for giving me such a strong head because listen, like mental health is real and like yo, like. Pfft, Fam, when I mean like yo, it's stressful. Like you know, we just have one little problem. Like it's like have a little problem, little problem, little problem, little problem, and they all add up, and it's all coming at once. It's not even like this. Yeah, cool. Like one little hurdle, and you're like, yeah, jump over that, and there's the next one. One comes as soon as you put your foot down, another hurdle, and you're like, yo, man, I ain't even got my breath yet. Like it's so long, man. It's stressful. Like I don't understand this thing, bro. Like with was honestly you, with the rent, like with the deposit stuff, and everything, like yo, man. See, stuff is so unprofessional. Some, over here, some some things that like, some people are just so unprofessional, man. Like, some people just shouldn't run a business, like, as simple as that. It's disgusting, like, like from the, even the security guard to to the um, workers, to the um, to the manager. Like, the manager don't know what I'm going on. Like, you don't know what's going on. The security guard is just always drunk or whatever he is. I don't know, sleepy. Like, it don't make sense, like. Like, these people have no customer service, like, honestly. <sighs> you live and you learn, innit? You feel me? Obviously, every time you go through an experience, you just realise, like, literally, the only thing left for me to do, I just got to build my own place, man, and just have my own, you get me, have my own people, man. This renting thing's just long, man. It's literally, it's just long, but obviously, getting a location, getting land in the location that I want, or a place that you want, like, you're looking at... Like, you're looking like a hundred bags, you're looking like a hundred grand, like literally. Like that's how pff, oh, land is expensive over here. Unless like you go like Kaswan and places, but it's, see what it is, it's like every country. It's like when you go to America, like if you wanna do something and you if you wanna blow up something, you're not gonna go to an area where like where everything's cheap because there's no one there basically, if that makes sense. So yeah, so obviously that's something that I'll have to do with obviously it's my choice. But yeah man. And yeah, so Going through all of this stressful times, um, a comment popped up on my YouTube channel. Like basically, a comment popped up on my YouTube channel. Um, someone saying that basically they're proud of the person I've become and basically not to give up and keep going. And obviously, reading that was just like I remembered like why I do this, and I was like, yeah, yeah, like. I'm not just giving up on myself, I'd be giving up on everyone else. Everyone everyone who supported me, everyone do, who had hope, like, if I ever give up, I'll let everyone down, like, literally. Not even myself, like, you get me? But most importantly, I don't want to let myself down. But, oh, pff, bruh, like, one thing after the other. Like, literally, the only thing I could do is smile and laugh because, like, what am I going to do, cry? <laughs> Oh my goodness, like, honestly, I appreciate you lot support so, so, so much, um, and do you know what, during the week as well, um, you know, God did bless me with something, he gave me an opportunity, and if I blew it, then obviously it's my fault I blew it, like, the opportunity was there, um, so, um, I went to go have a look at a property, I went into a mortgage, and I was asking about mortgaging, um, a property, and the way that, um, the guy, this guy um, that I met was speaking to me, like, I was so fascinated, I was like, this guy is really, really professional, like, I really want, I'm really intrigued about the company that this guy works for, so um, I asked him, like, if I could do a video with him, and, you know, I'm not going to say too much, but, you know, I'll put out there what I can do, what I'll be able to do for them, and um, they'll get back to me, and hopefully if they get back to me, I'll have so, so, so much content for you, um, so much information, like, I'm never gonna, like I said, I'm never gonna talk in it until it actually happens, but I just wanna thank God, um, for that as well, and, um, thank you lot for all your support, thank you for everything, um, you know, sometimes we have, the reason why I do this, like, I do this so I show you people, basically, and myself, because sometimes it's hard to take your own advice, but when you're talking and giving someone else advice, it kind it kind of helps, so, um, me doing this and me venting, it's like um it's like i'm in therapy so 
at the same time I want people to know that you're like you're watching this um YouTubers, you're watching these people, these people are not showing you what's good, they're not showing you the realness, they're not showing you what's really happening behind the doors. Like for example, someone will take a picture, post it on Instagram, and you'd think, How the hell did this girl take a picture like this? And you'd be so stressed out. Whether if, if you're a girl, you'd be so stressed out trying to take a picture like hers, but you're not understanding that this girl has taken at least five days to take that perfect picture. Okay, not at least five days, but at least a whole day to take a perfect picture. Sometimes it takes more than a day. But you're not seeing that because she's not telling you that. At the same time, you're thinking, why she got no spots? She ain't got no spots because she's been brushing her face. Feel me? So th these are the things that I want the young people to understand that, yo, it's really hard out here. Like, you see someone doing YouTube. Yeah, cool. Like, someone, they won't, most people won't tell you and sit down and tell you the hardships that they went through to get there. They just want to show you when they've made it and show you that, yeah, like, you, or you, what, they, what do they say? They say early bird gets the word. And that's the type of thing they'll tell you. But they won't tell you that, yo, there's going to be certain times you're going to wake up early. And for that whole week, you ain't going to make anything. There's going to be certain times for like a whole month, you might not make anything. Feel me? So they're not telling you. I'm just letting you know that, yo. It's real out here. Whether if you see someone doing something easy, that like you think to yourself that, yeah, I would have done this easy, but just know that it took time for them to get there to make it look easy. So whatever it is that you're doing, never give up. Don't always look for the easy way. Just do your thing and just keep pushing at it. Keep pressurizing. Get me? Just keep pushing at it. That's all I have to say. And um, yeah, man, thank you for all your support. Thank you for um, subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe.